So here's what's going to happen in this video. I'm going to show you all the useful things you can do with one finger, two fingers, three fingers, and four fingers with the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard. But before I do all of that, I am going to cover one option that I think everybody needs to turn on before using a trackpad with iPad OS. At Mobile Reviews, eh? Monty and I base our videos on actual usage, and one of the reasons why we're creating this video is because we're in the process of reviewing a third-party trackpad iPad keyboard thing, this Bridge Pro Plus, and realize that third-party trackpads, like, you know, the Logitech one I have here, and Apple's trackpads, these two, are completely different in terms of gesturing. Difference is the wrong word. Completely useless when it comes to gesturing. So the first thing you can do with your trackpad on your Magic Keyboard is, well, to wake your iPad. Then you need to go to Settings, Trackpad, and then turn on Tap to Click. This allows you to gently tap the trackpad rather than having to push it all the way down. And that's more in line of, you know, lightly touching your screen instead of when it comes to using the iPad trackpad with one finger, every trackpad allowed me to tap on the control center of the dock and the notification center. Now as a side note, an easier way to do this instead of waiting for the cursor to change its shape and then pressing whatever you need to press, you can just kind of swipe up on the control center and swipe up on the notification and swipe down on the dock. It's way easier to do it that way. Also, if you swipe down again after bringing up the dock, it'll bring you home. And it takes your brain to get kind of used to that because instead of swiping up to go home like you would normally, like so, well, I can't face ID the camera, uh, you have to swipe down. The only other thing I can show you with one finger is that double tapping on a word will select it like it does when you normally do it with the touch screen. I know this first one finger section seems kind of silly, but if these track pads can't do that, then you know, what's the point of that product? Anyways, on to two fingers. This is where the track pads start to differ a bit. With two fingers, when you're on the home screen, you can swipe down and bring up spotlight. And this is my preferred way of getting to apps on my iOS devices. It's just really easy to swipe down and type in the name. Now, if you're noodling around with text, tapping with two fingers will allow you to bring up the secondary click. You can also scroll up and down with two fingers, but if you're using Safari going forwards and backwards in your web page usage or history only works on Apple trackpads. Doesn't work on this Bridge Pro and it doesn't work on this Logitech one. Maybe it's not a big deal, but on these third-party products, pinch and zoom don't work. Which maybe isn't a big deal either because you can easily just pinch and zoom on the screen. But then again, what's the point of those trackpad products if you can't do those, you know, relatively simple things? On to whoosh, three fingers. Now, if you're using something like this Bridge Pro or this Logitech K400, there's absolutely nothing you can do with three fingers. Out of the box. If you're using an Apple branded product, so like this trackpad and this keyboard with three fingers, you can swipe up to bring you home, swipe up with a pause to bring up app expose or multitasking, swipe left or right with three fingers to go through your apps. Now I do have to point out that you can wake your iPad using the trackpad if the keyboard's already on with a third party trackpad, but with this product, you can actually swipe up. You still have to swipe up on the screen or push the home button. So. It's just not as slick. It really boggles my mind that this is an alternative to this. On to four fingers. Honestly, when it comes to four, fing four fingers, the most, it's, there's only one gesture that I found. It's incredibly awkward and it's accessing app expose by kind of squishing your fingers together on, a tri on the tiny trackpad. It's incredibly uh, awkward to use. Honestly, I have no idea who would do that. You know, three fingers and a thumb on this is maybe doable on a bigger trackpad, but on this tiny thing, yeah, it's, I wouldn't. Just go to the three fingers and pause to get to the same result. So that's all I got for this video. Questions, comments, leave them down there. Hopefully this tutorial was useful for you guys. I had to go figure out myself because I'm doing a review for this product and I need to know how hamstrung the trackpad is when compared to Apple's native products. Uh, first time watching one of my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe, producing content a lot lately, a lot of product reviews. If you are 
If this isn't the first time you watch one of my videos, hit the notification button so that every single time I produce a new video, you get notified. That's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching. Now, if you're finding this tutorial useful and you're looking for other iPad accessories like cases, screen protectors, and other keyboard cases, uh, do check out those playlists that I'll link either in the cards or in the description section below. If you're using an Apple trackpad of whatever, if you're using an Apple trackpad, then with free... F if you're using an Apple... If you're using an Apple branded trackpad, if you're using an actual Apple... If you're using an actual Apple trackpad or magic keyboard with free finger, with free, with free fingers, frick. Like it's, I guess you could do three fingers and a thumb. Can you do that?